It was the 1930s, and the country was gripped in the Great Depression. The world was hurtling towards the Second World War. In that challenging environment, Queens College opened its doors to students on October 11, 1937. The prime mover was a Queens native, district attorney, and judge, Charles S. Colden. Charles identified the New York Parental School in Flushing, which was being used as a temporary children's hospital. As the proud child of immigrant parents, Mayor Fiorella LaGuardia understood the importance of higher education. On Christmas Day, 1936, he called Colden. Charlie, he said, you've got a Christmas present. The present was Queens College. On April 6, 1937, the Board of Higher Education established a College of Liberal Arts and Sciences with 16 departments set on a 52-acre site in Flushing with nine buildings. The board appointed immigrant Paul Clapper, Dean of the School of Education at City College, to be president of the new school. Assisted by Margaret Kiley, the first dean of faculty, Clapper chose 26 of 3,600 faculty applications. Of 400 freshmen admitted, 95% were from Queens and half were women. Delayed by a painter strike, classes began on October 11, 1937. Mayor LaGuardia said, keep your buildings low and your ideals high and keep away from politicians. In the early 1940s, a summer session, an evening program, and radio classes began. The first commencement was held on June 16, 1941. Students on campus soon joined the war effort, holding war bond drives, collecting over a ton of scrap metal, using their own paper for exams. More than 1,100 male and 22 female students would serve in the armed forces during World War II. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt appeared on campus in 1943 at the first Spring Victory Lecture. The Orchestral Society formed in 1946, and the college's graduate division opened in 1948. In 1949, John J. Theobald became Queens College's second president. Ira Remsen Hall, the first major new building on campus, opened in 1950. The Sigma chapter of Phi Beta Kappa was installed at the college. Student Martin Lauren composed the official college song, Blue and Silver. The Paul Clapper Library opened in 1955. The art collection began in 1957, which evolved into the current Godwin Turnback Museum. In 1958, Harold W. Stoke was named Queens College's third president. Maurice Fitzgerald Gymnasium opened, named for the late borough president who strongly supported it. A concert to dedicate Colden Center was performed by the New York Philharmonic in 1961. The nation was stunned in June 1964 by the murders of Queens College student Andrew Goodman and fellow civil rights workers James Cheney and Michael Schwerner in Mississippi. Students and faculty organized freedom rallies, voter registration drives, and a hunger strike. In 1965, Joseph P. McMurray became the college's fourth president. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. was the first speaker in the John F. Kennedy Memorial Lecture Series. I certainly stand here under the inspiration of the fact that it was Queens College that gave to America and indeed to the world Andy Goodman, whose creative witness will certainly live for generations yet unborn. He, along with others, paid the supreme price for this struggle and I'm sure that we will see in many ways that his death was not in vain. 
1966, the Search for Education, Elevation, and Knowledge, known as the SEEK program, was created by New York State as the Higher Education Opportunity Program for CUNY Senior Colleges. Today, the Percy E. Sutton SEEK program is housed in Lloyd Delaney Hall, which is named after the former director. Spring 1969 saw numerous student demonstrations and a counter-commencement over the Vietnam War and college policies. In May 1970, students reacted to the killing by Ohio National Guardsmen of four student protesters at Kent State with a demonstration that stopped traffic on the Long Island Expressway. In 1971, Joseph S. Murphy was named the college's fifth president. In 1973, Queens College hosted the Women's National Basketball Tournament and the Queens College Knights, coached by Lucille Cavallis, made it to the finals. Gail Marquis played on the silver medal winning United States women's basketball team at the 1976 Summer Olympic Games in Montreal. The college experienced the effects of New York City's fiscal crisis with severe cutbacks. Undergraduate tuition was charged for the first time in the fall of 1976. In 1978, Saul B. Cohen was named sixth president of Queens College. President Jimmy Carter held a town hall meeting at Colden Center. At the beginning of the decade, New York State stepped in and assume responsibility for funding CUNY senior colleges. The School of Education and Godwin Turnback Museum soon opened, and the Aaron Copeland School of Music was founded. Barry Commoner moved his Center for the Biology of Natural Systems to the college. In 1984, Townsend Harris High School was reborn at Queens College. Shirley Strom Kenny was named the college's seventh president in 1985, and Jimmy Heath was named to help organize Queens College's newly created jazz program. In 1986, Queens College began administering the Louis Armstrong House in Corona. The new science building was dedicated, and the Benjamin S. Rosenthal Library opened its doors in 1988. In 1994, the Louis Armstrong Archives opened in the Benjamin S. Rosenthal Library. Alan Lee Sessons, was appointed the college's eighth president. First Lady Hillary Clinton visited campus in 1998. The CUNY Honors College, now the Macaulay Honors College, opened in 2001 with Queens College as one of the five founding schools. James L. Meiskin became the college's ninth president in 2002. Forty members of the Queens College community tragically lost their lives in the 9-11 terrorist attacks. At Ground Zero, the Center for the Biology of Natural Systems took on a leading role in monitoring and advocating for the health of 9-11 workers responsible for the cleanup. In 2006, with funding provided by veteran Arnold Franco, the World War II Veterans Memorial Plaza was dedicated on the quad. The Selma and Max Kupferberg Center for the Visual and Performing Arts was dedicated and made possible with funding from Max Kupferberg. In 2009, Queens College opened the Summit, its first residence hall. The Civil Rights Archive was established at the Rosenthal Library. The campus served as a shelter for hundreds of people displaced by Hurricane Sandy in 2012. Felix V. Matos Rodriguez was named Queens College's 10th president in 2014. In 2016, the college opened a tech incubator for entrepreneurs, the first in the borough of Queens. Queens College was ranked in 2017 among the top 1% of all United States colleges in helping students move from poverty to prosperity. The Louis Armstrong House Museum broke ground on a new $23 million education center. Alumna Cristina Jimenez Moreta was named the MacArthur Genius Award winner. Together with LaGuardia Community College, a small business development center, 
was launched at Queens College. An economic impact study revealed Queens College adds over $1.8 billion annually to the metropolitan area economy. Frank H. Wu was appointed Queens College's 11th president, the first Asian American president of all CUNY colleges in Queens County. The college was locked down in March due to the COVID-19 pandemic and shifted nearly all of its classes online. In 2021, the Queens College Foundation provided $2.75 million to create a critical needs fund. Queens College was named a Princeton Review Best College for the 30th consecutive year. The Thomas Chen Family Crystal Windows Endowment of $1.1 million to support Asian contemporary art was announced as a new School of Arts was established. Alumnus Adriano Espaillat, the first Dominican-American and formerly undocumented immigrant to serve in Congress, was the 2021 commencement speaker. In 2022, the college announced receipt of almost $2 million in federal funding for a project to detect COVID-19 in wastewater. At a March launch, Queens College announced its new School of Business. A brand new athletic complex with a modern track and two soccer fields opened in the spring. Commencement returned to the campus quad for the first time since the onset of the pandemic. Born amid worldwide economic hardship and under the cloud of imminent war, the college finds itself today, 85 years old and nearly 130,000 graduates later, confident that 85 years from now, Queens College will still be here, renewed, resilient, and resourceful, continuing to graduate students into leadership positions in all fields, and fulfilling President Paul Clapper's original charge, Decimus Ut Serviamus. We learn so that we may serve.